This is a quick video about equals and hash code contract. The contract basically says equal objects must have equal hash codes. That means whenever you are providing a logical equals implementation in your class, you should also provide a hash code implementation that is meaningful, without which your class will act strange and cause bugs when it is used in hash based collections like hash maps, hash tables or hash sets. So given that, it's very important that you provide a meaningful hash code API as well when you provide an equal method implementation. So this was popularized by George Block in his uh, famous Effective Java book and he has discussed it very clearly in his book. So if you haven't read that book uh, so far and if you're a Java developer, I recommend that book. It's very useful and it's very easy to read. So now anyway let us see what happens if you do not provide the hash code implementation. So for that I'm going to go to my IDE and try to run a couple of examples and see what happens. So here let's create a new test class called uh, contract test. So in this class what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dummy object sorry class called class employee key and I'm going to use this as a key on a hash map that's why I'm calling it so. So let's assume that the employee key has uh, two uh, fields like um, string uh, employee ID and string uh, date of birth. So let's create a <coughs> constructor for this with uh, st uh, two string arguments uh, so this constructor takes two arguments and assigns it to its variable the id and the date of birth equals sorry uh, the field date of birth equals the date of birth so now this is the key i'm going to use uh, which is the employee key class and I'm going to provide an equals method to compare two employee key objects. So basically the um, two employee key objects are logically equal when they have the same employee ID and same date of birth. So now I'm going to implement um, an equals method. I'm going to just use um, ID as default implementation. And it says uh, next, I'm going to create Note that I'm not creating hash code implementation. So here, so idea has created the equals implementation for me and this checks if date of birth equals the given object's date of birth and employee ID equals the other employee object's employee ID. Uh, we are saying th those are the both the employee key objects are equal. So given that, let's now go and create some um, test scenario. So let's assume uh, we have an application that loads a bunch of employee data from the database and tries to build some kind of a cache using hash map. So now I'm going to write a method here called static map of uh, the key is going to be employee key and the value I'm going to put a string value And that uh, that's a method called load employee cache. So uh, let's assume some DB operations are done, and we are populating a hash map of uh, uh, to represent the cache. So for now, I'm going to create a mock implementation, which is basically hard coded employee key and values. So first step is to create employee key. Um, EK employee key one equals new employee key of employee ID which let's say 100 and date of birth is 10-10-1984. So let's create a few more keys. Um, <clears throat> employee key 2, employee key 3 and let's add 101 and 102 with some uh, different dates.
All right, so we have three employee key objects created. Now let's put some data on a cache, a hash map, and return it to the column. So map employee key comma string uh, cache equals new hash map. And the map, I'm going to put some values. Cache dot put ek1, and let's say we are putting the names. So this is Bob and ek2, I'm putting Steve and ek3, I'm putting um, let's say Robert. So once this is built, I'm returning this to the caller. Return cache. So let's assume this is our um, load employee cache implementation. Uh, this is hard coded for now. Let's assume this was done through some database or something. Now I'm going to um, cre use that uh, the, the cache that is loaded. So let's um, map of employee key comma string cache equals load employee cache. So now I loaded the employee cache, and I have three employees in that uh, uh, in that map, which is Bob, Steve, and Robert, with these keys assigned to them. So now, um, given my cache, I want to look up. So I'm going to create a key, employee key, lookup key equals new employee key. Suppose I'm creating a key same as that of uh, 101 which is actually assigned to Steve so let's try to create the same key so I'm new employee key of these two parameters so I created the same key now my next step is to say string employee name equals cache dot get lookup key so my expected result is that since I uh, used the same employee ID of uh, 101 and the date of birth 11-10-1974 and which is assigned to Steve here, when I get, I should get the employee name back as Steve. So now let's try to run this example and see what the example prints. See that when we run the example, we get null instead of Steve, which we expected to get. So that means if you, since you have, uh, you missed implementing hash code, the system is not able to look that up in the um, in the map, even though there is a very similar key out there in the map. So if the uh, programmer or the developer was not aware of the contract or, or was overlooking the fact that hash code was required, he will be totally puzzled why my uh, hash, uh, the uh, why my ha hash map is not returning the expected uh, result. So that's the case uh, that this is what happens if you do not implement hash code. So now let's try to implement a hash code on the employee key object and see what happens. So I'm going to um, rely on IDEA, uh, my IDE, to generate a hash code implementation for me. So uh, I'm going to use these two uh, fields which are important in the class to generate the hash code. So here you go. So this is the um, implementation of hash code that IDEA provided me, which I'm pretty much satisfied with. And with that, I'm going to rerun my example program and see what the output is. Now I get the expected result Steve back because I implemented hash code. So now I think uh, you would understand what is the significance of following the equals and hash code contract. Also I would like to demonstrate one more thing. Uh, suppose again I'm going to delete this hash code implementation down here. And suppose um, let's, uh, let's try to add all these things into a um, a set and see what happens. So uh, uh, the set by definition is going to contain only uh, unique items. So let's create a set. So I'm going to take uh, delete all this other example here which is which was demonstrating 
what happens with the hash map. Okay, so I'm going to create um, a few items. Employee key ek1, ek2, ek3, ek4, and ek5. So now uh, let's assume we created, these are all duplicate data. See, this is, this is same as this, and these two are same. And suppose let's make this unique like 103 and some other date and this. Uh, so now let's try to add this item to a hash set. So set of um, employee key uh, set equals new hash set. So my expectation is that whenever I add duplicates to the set, so the set will automatically take care of it and give me only the unique elements back in the set. So let's try to do that and see what happens. Set dot add ek1, ek2, ek3, ek4, and ek5. I'm adding these to the set. And let's now print the set contents on this screen. So for that I'm going to provide a two string implementation here so that we can see what happens uh, when we try to add these objects to the set. So now let's run this example and observe the output of the contents of the set. So as you can see the set has added duplicate elements into the set for employee key. Here say 102, 102, this date 11, 10, 1974, 11, 10, 1974, and see 101, 11, 10, 1974, and 101, 11, 17, uh, sorry, 11, 10, 1974. So we have easily added duplicate items, though our logical equals method should have prevented. But so that's what you would think. So without a hash code method, your object will cause bugs when it's added to hash maps or hash sets or hash table as we just saw. So for that, what you should do is you should always implement hash code along with the equals. And if you do not know how to implement hash code, which is uh, uh, a kind of a tricky uh, steps to implement, you should always depend on the IDE to generate one for, uh, one for you. And all the modern IDEs, let it be Eclipse, IDEA or NetBeans, all these IDEs create very decent hash code implementation and you can al always trust on them and just follow it. So I'm just going to create um, an automatic hash code implementation for me and I'm going to rerun this example and make sure at this point uh, the duplicate items are eliminated from the set. So I'm rerunning this example and if you observe the output you would see now the set only has unique items. So now I, I guess you might have understood uh, the significance of equals and hash code contract. So uh, up until next week, um, um, please subscribe to my, my videos if you are interested in the content. And let me know if you have any uh, questions or comments through the YouTube comment. Thank you.